Well, welcome back. Just before the break, I mentioned it. World's biggest buyer of soybeans changing the way it uses soybeans. China recently announcing a policy to reduce soybeans and soybean meal and feed rations. That's already having an impact. So, Dan, when you look at this, do you think this is going to significantly change demand in 2024? Well, we will watch it carefully. At this point, we're not seeing it in the data. China's importing a record amount of soybeans, at least globally uh, from this perspective. So they're still active buying from Brazil. I'll watch it carefully, but when you get the Chinese feed data, it's a little bit of an enigma. We don't have any statistical background to really prove or disprove what they're asking for. And this is not the first time China's made this pivot. They did about three years ago. So again, I'm, I, I think it's a story that the market's listening to. Statistically, though, it's going to be very hard to prove. Yeah, usage in feed, that fell more than 10% in the first 11 months of 2023 compared to the same period in 2022. And when you look at feed usage, that will be something that we could possibly see USDA adjust next week, Joe. One of the things that I think is a little bit more immediate and, and maybe important to the marketplace is that crush margins in China are negative. The, the processor in China isn't making money. They've got they've got hog problems again. I think that the uh, the policy move, as Dan mentioned, that they did try a couple of years ago, I remember talking about that. Um, I don't think that's the big deal. I don't know if they have the ability to, to move away from soybeans in the way that they say they're going to. But the crush situation and, and also some of the negatives that we've heard about the Chinese economy are all kind of cause for concern. I think that's a, another part of the reason the soybean market has struggled the way that it has. Yeah, Dan, when you look at some of these geopolitical concerns, though, that's also weighing on the markets, um, what are you watching as we head into the new year? Well, the big one that I've got questions about, and it comes from my Ukrainian clients, is the, of course, Red Sea and the Suez Canal. Uh, you know, a lot of that Ukrainian corn heading to Southeast Asia will go through there. And so as the price of insurance, as the difficulty in, in moving freight through that part of the world uh, increases with the spreading tensions in the Mideast, they are now forced to go around the Horn of Africa. This is raising uh, freight costs by about $20 a ton. And Ukraine was just getting that corridor working, and now they're fighting with this. So uh, again, I think you're going to find a little U.S. corn supplanting that Ukrainian business. It's going to be positive for the U.S. market. Maybe it's why corn in Chicago is stabilizing, but I think it's something in agriculture we need to be watching carefully. Joe, let's switch gears here to, to feed users, talk about livestock a little bit. As we look at cattle prices, you know, big debate right now. Have we already seen the highs in the cattle market? And what are we going to see as we head into 2024? What, what do you think? We've got a decent start to the year. There was some cash trade last week during the holiday week that was a little bit better. We got into a situation where these large money managers or fund traders, they, at the end of the year, kind of cleared out most of the length that they, that they had in the cattle market. And now maybe with some better cash trade, maybe with some weather coming in, maybe they've got the green light to go ahead and own cattle again. And it, and it looks like they're doing that at least through the first uh, few days of the year. I think there's still a, a good fundamental story there. It's a multi-year story. It's, it's not over yet. So that was clearly some sort of low we posted late in 2023. I just don't know if that was the low. Dan, you've said it on the show before. You think 2024 is the year of protein. Do or, Are you still in that camp? No, we're still in that camp. I think when you look at the U.S. beef herd, beef cow herd, if you look at the contraction that we're still having, there's no signs of expansion. We still have runway here for a couple of years of higher meat prices. So my mind is still stuck in 2024 being a year of protein with feeder cattle and cattle being the upside leaders. Dan, Joe, thank you so much for joining us. We briefly talked about some of those geopolitical issues that we're watching around the globe. We're going to take a deeper dive into that when we look at agriculture around the globe next. 